Okay, it's about two o'clock, and so I'm going to get started here. Uh, welcome to today's Rails Online Roundtable, Libraries and Facebook Live. Um, I'm Dan Bostrom. I'm the Rails Member Engagement Manager, and uh, we're very lucky today to have uh, two presenters here with us from the Evergreen Park Public Library, uh, Jenna Hart Wisniewski and Laura Meyer. Um, very excited to hear about their efforts and some of the things that they are doing. Um, just a reminder that these online roundtables are a little bit different. They're peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities. Um, it's a little bit different than a traditional webinar. So uh, Laura and Jenna are going to do a presentation on what uh, you know what they're doing, um, but we also want to make this a conversation. So um, there's going to be a facilitated discussion at the end. Um, we'll have some questions for you, and we'll hope you'll stick around to kind of participate um, and and contribute your your own ideas. Uh, okay, so this is how we are going to operate today. Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction and I'm going to talk about some things that are happening around Rails. Uh, we'll have our presentation from uh, Laura and Jenna and then uh, that will be 15 minutes or so and then the second half is going to be all discussion. Uh, we will give you an opportunity to ask uh, Laura and Jenna some questions so there'll be a Q&A and then uh, again we'll be doing some questions for you all. Uh, so I, I want to do a quick practice. So um, if you want to introduce yourself, this is a great opportunity. Um, in the introductions uh, or in the chat box, you can enter, um, you know, your name, your title, your institution, if you're comfortable, um, and then one exciting thing that's happening at your library. And when you do that, um, please make sure to choose that option that says all attendees and panelists. Um, if you choose all panelists, it's only going to go to um, myself and Jenna and Laura. Uh, so no, no one else will be able to see that. Um, okay, so uh, let's get to some news and opportunities from Rails. Uh, okay, the big one is tomorrow, and actually uh, we're excited about this. We think it's going to be really, really well attended. Um, anyone can sign up for this. It's the Rails member update, and we're going to be talking about a bunch of topics, including uh, libraries as essential services, uh, furloughs, safe handling of library materials, and uh, we're also going to be sharing some reopening plans. Um, I think it's going to be a really vibrant conversation. I think it's going to be very much alive, um, so I do hope that you will join us. That's 10 a.m. for 12 p.m. Um, that should be listed listed on L2 or the Rails uh, website, so take a look there. Um, uh, we do have something else that we'll hope you participate in, and this is uh, just a survey that we put together. Uh, Rails is looking for virtual programming ideas from all types of libraries and geographic areas. So if your library is offering unique or offering virtual services programs or doing something else unique during the uh, shelter in place order, um, we'd like to hear about it. We want your input. Uh, this is a great way to get some ideas so you can actually um, access the results from this survey um, and then you can adapt those for your own library. So um, this is a great way that libraries are sharing and we want to uh, continue this make it as useful for you as possible. Okay, tomorrow, I'm, uh, I'm excited. This is happening right after that member update. We are doing a webinar, and uh, this is one of our favorite presenters, Becky Spratford, and she's going to be discussing how to help your library talk to patrons about horror. Um, Becky promises that you don't have to terrorize yourself in the process. Um, so this is happening 1 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, there's still a chance to register, so head over to L2 um, and get registered for that. Uh, just want to point out something that uh, we did in early March, but is still available to you as long as you have an L2 username and password. Uh, we had this great webinar, um, and it was from uh, it was uh, presented by Angela Hirsch. And if you don't know Angela, she runs superlibrarymarketing.com, and she's a really passionate advocate for doing good uh, marketing in libraries. And uh, we were so fortunate to, uh, that she let us archive this. So it's available uh, at any time from the Rails website. Just go to our website. Um, log in with your L2 username and password, and then um, check out the, uh, the CE archives. Great way to find this. So it's happened about a month ago and uh, really good, uh, really good webinar. Okay, last thing I'm going to talk about is we have three upcoming Rails online sessions that are uh, scheduled. Uh, we're trying to do this around once a week. Uh, so on uh, next Friday, we have Sarah Bronkhorst from the Glenview Public Library, and she's going to be talking about hosting online author visits. Uh, and that's at, <clears throat> excuse me, that's at 10 a.m. 
Then the week after that, we have Jill Schachter from uh, Evanston Public Library, and she's going to talk us talk to us about shaping a library podcast. And uh, she took a really un unique approach, so I think that will really be a fun one. And finally, uh, Emily Glimko from the Addison Public Library is hosting an online roundtable on uh, being the only person at your library who handles marketing. Uh, I saw Emily give a version of this presentation at ILA last year, and it was fantastic. So I think uh, you, you will not want to miss that. Okay, so here we are. We are finally to our feature presentation. And at this point, we are going to hear from uh, Jenna Hart Wisniewski, who is the head of adult services at the Evergreen Public Library, and Laura Meyer, who is the head of youth services at the Evergreen Public Library. Uh, so welcome, Jenna and Laura. Uh, Jenna, I'm going to give you controls right now. Okay, it might take a second. Okay, Jenna, you got it? Okay. Yes, I think so. Awesome. All right, thanks so much, Dan, for the introduction. Um, I'm Jenna, I'm the Head of Adult Services at the Evergreen Park Public Library, and I'm joined by... I'm Laura, and I'm the Head of Children's Services at the Evergreen Park Public Library. <laughs> and thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we're excited to talk about what we've been doing at our library. Um, so a little bit about us, we're the Evergreen Park Public Library, located in Evergreen Park, Illinois. We are just south of Chicago. We're a pretty small community serving approximately 20,000 people. Um, it's a picture of our beautiful building right there that we missed so dearly. Um, I haven't been there since, geez, the end of March, I think. Um, but this whole Facebook Live thing, it's a very simple idea. Um, I'm sure that we've all used Facebook Live in the past, so this is really nothing super earth shattering. Um, but just take this as a really good reminder that we have a tool at hand that makes it really easy to engage with our patrons, which is one of our main goals during the stay at home order. We are looking to engage, educate, and entertain our communities. And one of the best ways to do this is through videos, whether live or pre-recorded and interactive social media posts. Uh, can I advance? <laughs> there it goes. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, let, <clears throat> all right, let me, hold on. Let me, let me fix this. All right, try double clicking now. Uh, there you go. There you we it. go, okay. So how did we choose our topics? Um, we you take a look at the talents of this uh, of your staff, like what kind of talents do they have outside of the library that can translate to a short online lesson. We're librarians. We are a very well rounded group. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Tim and Eric graphic above or on the slide that says, this is what we do. This is who we are. Um, we're really good at making ourselves relevant and essential, even when we're deemed non-essential. So chances are you have a very diverse group of individuals on staff with a multitude of talents. So capitalize on that. Um, choose to do things that you're passionate about and familiar with. So I personally crochet. So I decided to do a Facebook Live series of crochet lessons. Um, so what I did was come up with a cumulative lesson plan for each day and each day's lesson built upon the previous day's skill um, so that we learned, you know, just the super, super basic skills and then the next day was something a little bit more advanced and then the next day a little bit more advanced. And I turned it into an interactive lesson by encouraging participants to comment on the videos as I was doing it um, so that you know, they could ask me to clarify anything that I was doing or expand upon anything that I was teaching. Um, and the best thing about doing these videos is that they're saved and archived on Facebook so that people can go back to them. So that's good for my crochet lessons because it's not a one and done thing. It's something that you have to keep at. So if you watch the videos over and over again, then it's a great way to, great way to learn. So Laura. Yes, and she, you should go and check out her crochet videos. They're really excellent. Um, I, <laughs> they are, they're great, Jenna. I, um, I do story time in person, in the, uh, usually in person at the library uh, five times a week. So I just moved it to Facebook so that I do it four times a week on Facebook Live. Um, I think Facebook Live is good for, for programs like story time uh, more so than, for me at least, doing any kind of complicated crafting with children, because complicated crafting should 
works better in video so that you can you can fast forward through the tedious parts but with with using facebook live for story time it's good it adds an immediacy it makes you feel like you have an audience and you get a little feedback from people although with children you're not going to get a ton of feedback <laughs> but their parents often often share share reactions or say hi for the kids and so it's nice to know that there's people out there watching you yeah, and you should definitely watch her story times. It's the most entertaining thing on Facebook right now, I have to say. <laughs> You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next slide. So equipment needed. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously you need video and audio enabled devices. Use your phone, laptop, iPad. Um, these times we're kind of forced to get creative with what we have around the house. So in the photo here, you can see my rig <laughs> for my crochet lessons. It's nothing fancy at all. I have a tripod for my DSLR camera um, that does not have a phone hookup to it. So what I did was just balance my phone on it, um, which worked out really well. Um, it was good for selfie mode when I was addressing my audience and then I could just hit the switch camera feature so that it would turn to a forward facing camera to show a close up of my hands as I'm working. And I feel like Laura, you have a lot more to add to the equipment needed because your, yours was a lot more involved. So I'll let you expand on this. All right. Well, um, like Jenna, I haven't been to my library for three weeks now, but before I left the library, I brought I brought two big bins of books, picture books home. I brought all my felt board pieces. I brought a little portable felt board that I have. I brought a maraca and a scarf and my bubble machine and, and a couple of puppets. I brought stuff so that I could, I could do a, a 20 minute story time every day. Um, I, uh, with the kids though, you know, they don't have, you know, shakers and scarves and things like that. But I always, if I'm going to use something before a story time, I always tell them how they can they can either make a maraca with a with a little Easter egg, or it, instead of rhythm sticks, they can hit two spoons together. And instead of a scarf, they can use a hand towel. So there's there's different things that that the kids can have that since we don't all have our usual story time stuff anymore. But so I have a lot of things in my home now. But uh, you know, you can also try to make do, I guess, with things you already have. If you have a lot of children's books at home, that'd be great. <laughs> Next slide. Um, one more thing before we advance. I th think you had something about um, turning your screen horizontally. Oh, did I? Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I also use, um, I use an I iPad and uh, I use a laptop. But at the beginning, I was just using the iPad. So you want to make sure if you're using an iPad to do a FaceTime Live that you, um, you turn your screen around. Because if you're reading a story to the, to the iPad screen, it's going to be backwards unless you flip the screen around. So you have to touch the little icon that looks like a wand and then touch the little icon that looks like a toolbox. And you have to flip your screen around or else you're going to, you're going to have a backwards story. And it's not that big a deal because the kids are really just looking for the pictures. But <laughs> they are, they're children. <laughs> but it, it makes more sense to flip it around. And I had no idea about that feature. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Oh. All right, so choosing the best time and date. Um, what we do, I mean, Laura, you're kind of broadcasting at the normal time that you would host story time anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just picked the same 9.30, four days a week. Um, but I did notice when, when we did the pajama story time on Friday night, it was a Friday night at seven, I got a, I got a different crowd and, uh, and it was also pretty well received. So, you know, try a few different things. Yeah, and I think keeping the same times um, that you normally would, that, that keeps a sense of normalcy and that's really important for kids' schedules, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my crochet lessons, I kind of just chose a random time when I figured people would be stepping away from their computers or um, not working. So I, I logged in every day, uh, Monday through Friday at noon, when I figured people, you know, would stop working for the day and kind of want to take a break from work and do something not super mind numbing, but um, something other than work. So I figured noon was a good time. 
Um, also, oh, go ahead. And, but also since, since you can just post it afterwards, people can, can come and come back and view it any time. So that's nice too. Yeah, yeah. Um, also take a look at your Facebook insights. That's a really good tool to find out the popular times that people are viewing your content um, and how long they actually spend watching your videos. Um, I, I went through and looked at a, a bunch of our, um, our videos on our Facebook insights and just to see the average time that people spend watching them. And it's, it's interesting. I'm a stats person, so um, I like stuff like that. All right, communicating with team members. Obviously, communication is very important. And um, our lines of communication have definitely changed now that we're not all in the same building anymore. But the good news is that we live in the 21st century. So we have email, text, Zoom, Messenger, and yes, even phone calls um, to you know, communicate with all of our team members. So we really have no excuse to commun to not communicate. Um, no, I, say I communicate more with you guys now than I did before. Yeah, yeah. Sort of I mean, it was so. It sounds like it would be so easy to just get up and walk across the building and talk yeah. to you, but. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, and then it's really important to figure out who is doing what and when, so um, you're not you know, overlapping things, you're not cross posting thing, or I mean, it's okay to cross post things, but you're not duplicating posts or information. Um, so one thing that we did was we set up an advanced schedule um, so that we could list everything that we have throughout the week. Um, just make sure that everybody is aware of the schedule. Everybody on your team is aware of the schedule so that they know exactly what's happening when. And um, no one's really going rogue on your team if you have multiple people posting. Um, it's just good to streamline all of your information like that. Um, you also have the element, if you're bringing in outside performers, um, so one thing that, that we did was have, um, for two Saturdays, we had what we called a Saturday, Saturday serenade. So we had local artists play their music live on our Facebook. And um, so it's really important to communicate well with them and make sure that they know exactly where to post. And if you have them logging into your Facebook account, um, they know, you know, to be appropriate on your page and everything that they need to know. And Laura, do you have anything else to add about communication? No, I think that's it. Okay. So um, promotion and marketing. This is what our schedule looks like. Um, every week it's the same thing so that people know what to look for on our Facebook page and Instagram. Um, we came up with a cute little logo or a slogan that says, stay home, we're bringing the library to you. Um, so we have listed every single day what we have going on. It's just a weekly preview um, that I share every Sunday. So this kind of goes in with the communication slide. Make sure that you have everybody sending you their plans for the upcoming week so that you can get everything onto the slide um, and get all the information out there that you can. Um, we've listed all the programs that we're doing and where they're going to be posted to. So Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, wherever you have them going to. And Laura, you've been really good at creating Facebook events. Yes, we still create Facebook events. They don't seem to get as much traction as they did in when we were still working in in real life <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but they are there so people another way for people to keep track yeah and it's um you know important to do your regular reminder posts and share your posts about what you're going to be doing what's coming up um we've also updated our um, our website to reflect what we have going on so we used to scroll banners of you know our it, our, uh, I don't even know what to call it, our um, programs that we had coming up at the library. Um, of course, now it's all online or virtual. So um, all of our banners show what we're going to be doing either live or pre-recorded. And um, we've linked all of these videos. You can click on learn more to um, route directly to our Facebook page. Uh, so that it takes you straight to the videos tab of our Facebook page. And um, instead of, you know, having people go to our Facebook page and then browse all the way down our timeline, because we've posted stuff, you know, three, four weeks ago, God, it seems so long ago, mm -hmm. um, that would take you forever to get to. So we just link it directly to our videos section of our Facebook. And um, 
they can just review all the videos straight from there. I and just want to out, if I may for a moment. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. picture there is of uh, two of my patrons watching me do Facebook Live story time. And that was one of the first pictures that I got that showed, you know, the patrons use watching something that I was doing. It was pretty exciting. So that's always, it's all about the relationships for me. So I, that, I liked that. It was sweet. I have to say your story times are getting the best response from our patrons. <laughs> oh, it's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so more about promotion and marketing. Um, get your friends and family to share on social media. It kind of reminds me of the Wayne's World 2 scene where he says, they tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on. Um, you know, we're not constrained to just one locality anymore. Our reach can go outside of the bounds of just our geographical area. Um, think of your library as the entire world now. We can share it with friends and family in other parts of the world. And actually, Laura has a fun little tidbit about this. I do. My uh, cousin lives in Finland. My mother is from Finland. And he has my little cousins watching me do Facebook Live. They, they watch it in the evening. I do it in the morning. And it's nice. It's a nice way to connect with them. And, and it's just, and they've never got to see me work before. So that's kind of fun too. <laughs> but, yeah, so this is a really exciting time, I think. Yeah, it's nice. And it's, it, you don't know who you're reaching. So that's kind of fun too. Yeah. So what was our response? Um, I kind of copied and pasted some of the um, highlights of all the comments that we're getting on mostly Laura's story time. Um, so if you want to talk about some of the engagement that we've had with your story times. Well, let's see. Um, well, between March 19th and April 10th, we had 837 post engagements for 13 virtual story times. Um, what I notice is, is it, the, the live views are usually between maybe eight and 15 uh, views, but then, then throughout the day, I usually get between um, 200 to 450 views. So there's, there's a lot of people watching at least a little bit of, of our story times. And they do, um, people, people then post pictures of, at the end of every story time, I try to tell them an activity they can do. And I usually try to make it with things that they already would probably have on hand. So um, in the one picture here, there's the mom and the little boy in the tent. And that was for uh, a teddy bear story time. I suggested they do a teddy bear picnic. So they did, then they shared a picture. The kids in the middle are making bird feeders. And um, the boy on the right is my little cousin, and he's watching me do story time from Finland. So, um, so yeah, we've gotten we've gotten a very nice response. One night, a woman sent us a very nice message through Facebook just to say that you know we're doing a good job, and it was it's nice to hear, and it's nice to um, to show people that we're still there, we're still doing something for you. I think that's important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, my crochet lessons had a total reach of 373 people uh, for five lessons. So of course, I didn't have that many people <laughs> tuning in at one time, uh, just like your story times. But um, on average, I would have anywhere between two to 15 people um, live. And then of course, people would tune in after the fact, which goes back to all of your videos are going to be archived. So that's great for people to go back to and view in the you know, after the fact. Um, our Saturday serenade, we have a little bit of technical issues with the Wi-Fi, so it wasn't entirely live. Um, but, you know, that had some really good engagement, uh, tons and tons of shares. Um, I'm sure it was a bunch of the artists that, um, artists, friends and family that shared it, but still like the word got out there and people that normally wouldn't tune in to our Facebook page or come to the library, we were still engaging in our community. So that's really exciting. Um, I'm sure lots of libraries, well, I know that lots of libraries right now are featuring virtual story times, but if your library hasn't yet done that, definitely consider it, do it, consider doing it. So expanding our virtual presence, where do we go from here? And Laura, do you want to talk about the short term for right now? In the short term, um, well, to expand the Facebook live programming, we did, uh, well, we did an Instagram live program where 
one of our one of the staff members had the kids gave the kids the opportunity to read to her dog. So we did a virtual read to Rover, which was pretty much we were just video videoing her dog sitting there. <laughs> and the kids were <laughs> The kids were encouraged to read to the dog, like go and grab a book and spend 20 minutes reading to this picture of a dog. But that didn't get a huge amount of, of viewers. But we did have one person that sent us a mes message that she um, had her cat read to the dogs, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so dogs and cats getting along. <laughs> Like, that's beautiful just beautiful but um but we're gonna try it again anyway because it's just kind of a it's a cute idea even if it's not getting a huge response and uh we also expanded to doing a pajama story time the friday night pajama story time and that got you know like i said a whole different set of people and and uh and it was fun it's it's a good time i i enjoy doing it oh the one thing i the one more thing and this doesn't have anything to do with what we were talking about, I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned it, is that on Facebook Live, there's a little time lag. So there's a, there's like a 15 second lag. So that's kind of hard for, you're not going to get like people responding immediately to your questions. There's going to be a little time lapse. Have, did you notice that, Jenna? I did, yeah. Even um, anything that I've tuned into on Facebook Live, I've noticed mm -hmm. that, yeah. Yeah. So that's a bit of a bummer. It's hard to work around. But yeah. Um, and then in the long term, um, I mean, it's hard to decide right now how we'll proceed going forward. But um, once we open to the public again, it might be sort of difficult to offer Facebook Live events just with our staffing model, um, unless we have the staffing to cover service desks. But I love the reach that we've had with all of these Facebook Lives and um, video engagement. Um, I mean, even so far as other countries with your story times. Um, so I think that it would be a nice stretch of our outreach muscles to continue offering virtual services on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, doing programming around those. Um, so even though there might be some logistics involved with staffing, um, I think looking at the response that we've had, it might be something to um, consider. And, you know, this could change our service model to a certain degree in the future. Um, and so, of course, that's something that we'll have to figure out over time. Yeah, we're also going to continue doing this through the summer. So we have, we're have we going to have to figure out things to do regarding summer reading. Um, yes. And I'm sure this will just be play a part of it. And luckily we are a creative group, so yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get crafty with things. <laughs> All right, and thank you so much for listening to us. Um, of course, we invite you to email us anytime, um, whether you need motivation, if you want to bounce ideas around with us, or any clarification on anything that we talked about, or just to say hi, we, we welcome any chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Laura and Jenna. I really appreciate it. That's an uh, awesome uh, share. Okay, uh, hold on one second. Okay, so at this point, we're going to do a Q&A, and I think I already saw some questions coming in. Uh, okay, so um, one of the first questions that I saw right here is, uh, when you read stories live streaming, do you have to delete it after 24 hours? It, from what I have, from what I've read, um, some publishers want you to delete it after 24 hours and some have a date, I think it's like June 30th that you have to delete by. So um, there's a good article in School Library Journal that lists the publishers and what their criteria are. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I'm scanning for other uh, questions here. If you have questions, please uh, type them in the chat box. Um, I will I will ask them to uh, Jenna and Laura. Uh, I, I First of all, I want to say that I, and while people are typing, first of all, I want to say I love the anecdote about people seeing um, few people seeing the uh, story times in Finland. Um, I just want to acknowledge <laughs> that, that Jenna also wrote, my library Facebook page now has followers from Europe, which is <laughs> really cool. Um, Emma mentioned, I've cheered up every time I've gotten a picture of a kiddo watching my story time on their tablet or TV. It helps make up for not having them in front of me to know they're enjoying it. That's so right, so perfect. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for sharing that, Emma. Uh, 
Okay. Um, okay. So Gene asks, can a saved recording be posted to Facebook Live as a video? Yes. Isn't it, Jenna? <laughs> yeah. So anytime that you do a Facebook Live video, um, when you finish your recording, um, I think it gives you the option to, that says publish to Facebook. So if you hit that, it basically just saves to your Facebook videos that you already hit. You know, you've got like a little link yeah. on the side of your Facebook page that says videos. It'll just it's go there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. All right, thank you for sharing that. Um, Nicole asks, it, um, Laura, maybe you can share that uh, article. Um, she says, most publishers I'm seeing are saying you can only do story times in closed spaces, classroom apps, Google Classroom, et cetera. Um, so I, maybe we can share that after, um, uh, mm -hmm. but unless you have it um, at the ready. I don't. Um, okay, yep, that's fine. Yep. So we'll, we'll thank you for Nicole. I'll, I'll keep I'll keep that in mind and uh, uh, we'll, we'll share that afterwards. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so a lot of questions coming in. Thank you so much for everyone. Uh, so Christina asks, how does your daily book talk work? Oh, okay, I'll answer that one. Um, so we have staff, obviously, that are very passionate about books. Um, so I reached out to everybody and asked them, you know, can you just record a um, book talk? And I have kind of a backlog of videos of all of our staff members um, recording themselves talking about a book. So I'll just share that every day. And it's a pre-recorded um, video, so we don't go Facebook Live with that one, but um, you know, it's just a simple video that we share once a day. Awesome, thank you. And um, Jean shared an article uh, from School Library Journal, and I think that is the article that you're talking about. Um, well, yeah. Okay. Well, well that, maybe that is or that isn't. Uh, but I want to acknowledge, uh, thank you, Gene, for doing that. Um, Victor also shared, uh, I found that doing some cosplay while reviewing a book on Facebook is useful. I promoted the bloody crown of Conan on Hoopla and wore a black wig with wrist bracelets, a breastplate, and a replica of Conan's sword. I reached 337 377 people in four days. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Actually, I just want to mention one more thing about the book talks too. Um, it's really important since people don't have a very big, um, you know, may not have a very big library at home. Um, we've been focusing more on book titles that are available on the Libby app or as eBooks so that, you know, we'll say as of the t time of this recording, um, this book is available on Libby right now for you to download, or even if it's already checked out, you know, place a hold on it. So um, we're still focusing on books that they still have access to. Yeah, that's super smart. Yeah, exactly. Giving people a chance to, um, find, to and even maybe, maybe, maybe sort of uh, selling or, or promoting the, the books that people might not um, might not otherwise know about. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So Megan asks, how long are your book talk videos? Have you seen, uh, or read anything about video best practices or guidelines anywhere that you could share? Um, so the book talk videos average anywhere between like a minute to two minutes. So they're not very long. Um, and then as for best practices, I, I haven't really read or seen anything. It's just, we all happen to be really good at talking about our books <laughs> and pretty well practiced, so. You know what program caught my eye was uh, that Adult Teen 101, especially the stain removal. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm someone that likes to eat a lot of food with sauces, especially like <laughs> uh, red and uh, sauces. So um, you get um, to get stains. So that could be very useful for me. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, okay, so, so some great comments. Uh, Lisa says, we are focusing on Libby, Hoopla, eRead Illinois, which are services we have. Yep, thank you, Lisa. That's a great, uh, a great suggestion. Emma says, I felt like I offered up tons of books in a short amount of time for K through three students. So I put titles and links in a Google Doc that I posted in the link in comments. Oh, thank you, Emma, for doing that. Uh, people are sharing some great um, fair use articles. We really appreciate that. That, that helps a, big, uh, a lot. So thank you for doing that. Um, let's see here. Uh, any other questions for Laura or Jenna before we move on to our facilitated discussions? Actually, I had a question for the two of you. Um, and maybe this, this is, I, I feel bad springing this on you, but, um, if there, what would you do differently? I, I know that we all sort of did this. We all sort of had to adapt to a new, 
um, to a new reality very quickly. But if you could do it all over again, like what, what, how would you, what would you change or like, what, what would you, um, you know, how would you approach it differently? Laura, I'll let you go first. <laughs> okay. I think in the, I think in the beginning we were all just trying to throw, um, throw stuff out there. We were throwing out uh, videos and Facebook Live and we didn't really have a method to it. And it felt like, it felt chaotic. But then we kind of, after we, we got a plan together, but we did, the thing that we did do that, that was pretty good was that we started right away. So, so I guess it just, it took a week or a week and a half to, to bring some order to the chaos. Yeah, I think we definitely started off a little overzealous. Um, yeah, we wanted yeah. to provide all the services for people. And um, once we got our ideas sort of streamlined, that definitely made things better. Um, also, one of the things that we do, um, I feel like I kind of, um, you know, it took, took over, I guess, <laughs> so, um, where I'm, I'm having everybody send videos and stuff to me so that... Um, I can schedule them out um, and we don't have things scheduled or being posted super close together. And Laura, you're doing this too, where you're taking the videos from all the children or the youth services staff and scheduling those out, which is awesome. Um, so definitely, yeah, make sure that your posts are all spaced out and, um, you know, throughout the day so that it's not all posted at the same time and people aren't just, you know, having things thrown in their face. Yeah, that's great, great advice. And, and uh, it looks like my, my difficult question had the intended effect of actually spurring other people to ask questions. So uh, <laughs> we've got a bunch here. Uh, Lisa, so Lisa asks, we've had some technical difficulties. And uh, she asks if it, this is a question for everyone, but maybe just in case Jen or Laura, you want to comment on it. A anyone else has anyone else experienced issues with Facebook Live video or audio quality? I don't think I have. i it's been running pretty smoothly for me. How about you, Jenna? Um, it's been running pretty smoothly, except I think the only issue with my crochet lessons is the video quality seemed a little poor at times um, where it would glitch a little bit. And with crochet, you have to see things pretty clearly, like where you should insert your hook and um, you have to see things kind of close up. So it would get a little blurry at times. And I think that made things a little difficult. One thing, though, that I do want to mention about story time is make sure that you're really close up to your your camera so that the kids can see. I notice a lot of story time videos that I see. The people are very far away when they're reading the story. The whole point of a story time is to see the pictures. So go real close to your camera. Yeah, yeah. And if, if anyone else has some good uh, advice for Lisa, please be sure to add that to the chat box as well. Um, okay, so uh, Brenda asks, were you already doing Facebook Live programs before the building closed? No. I think the majority of our Facebook Live stuff was um, mostly Mary. Our, she does a lot, a lot with teens. Um, she would go Facebook Live when they were like doing a craft or an activity, but it was for like a very short amount of time. It would be maybe like 30 seconds to a minute. But yeah, we didn't do too much Facebook Live before that. Yeah, I think a lot of us are just, we're doing it uh, purely, I mean, it's all test, right? It's all just uh, yeah. experimenting and see what works. Um, okay, I love this question. Uh, so how do you overcome performance anxiety? I've been filming my story times ahead of time. I'd be nervous <laughs> to mess up live. How do you handle the anxiety? <laughs> oh my God. I usually sit in front of my camera for like 30 seconds before that beforehand with my heart pounding and like nervous sweat. <laughs> I, I always say, I'm going to make a reference that I think that many won't get because you're not old enough, but I always feel that I'm channeling Ray Rayner. So Ray Rayner was a, a, a children's TV. He was on children's TV back in the day, like with the Bozo show. And so it's just, you know, you get up there, you do it. It doesn't really matter <laughs> if it's not great or you're just supposed to have fun. And that's, that's it. So I'm just there to have fun. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I mess up. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> going to even know if you messed up. Um, in, in, my, in my experience... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's what I noticed after watching. Like, I'll do a story time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that was terrible. And then I watched it. I'm like, ah, I was fine. 
So I think everyone's always much harder on themselves than other people are going to be on you. Yeah, totally. And I mean, even from doing live presentations, like in person, I've always found that nobody's going to know if you messed up or if you forgot to mention something or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you feel a lot more nervous than people perceive you to be. So your heart might be racing, you might be sweating bullets, but you know, you think that your voice is going to be shaky, but people are going to be like, wow, you are really, you are really calm up there. Yeah. No one notices. (laughs) No one <laughs> uh, so, some great comments in here from people uh just some people are saying i just wing it <laughs> some people are saying i get a drink blow my nose <laughs> jennifer says i get a drink blow my nose take a deep breath let it out and remind myself that i'm human too then i start the video <laughs> i love it Blow my nose that's a really good <laughs> good piece of advice <laughs> Nobody wants to get on live camera with a runny nose. <laughs> um, Jessica asked a question, and this is both, I think, uh, for um, for you and for, for everyone else participating here. Uh, she says, have other libraries had outside presenters hold programs virtually? Uh, were they using your software slash sites or their own webinar uh, slash software? Um, any any comment on that? Uh, you know, what, what, or maybe the question for you would be, uh, what was your decision to allow people, you know, outside presenters to to present on your Facebook Live? Was there any consideration of doing that um, differently? Um, so I can kind of speak to that with our Saturday serenade. Um, the first time that we did it, we just had our um, performer record himself ahead of time playing the guitar. And then we gave him access to our YouTube channel login so that he could upload all of his videos straight to YouTube. And then we shared those YouTube videos. Um, I mean, we have no issue doing that because these are people that we trust. And then we can just change the password after the fact. Um, and then last Saturday, I had, um, I'd set up another performance for Saturday Serenade. So I, ha- I gave my personal, I don't, I don't use my personal Facebook for the library's Facebook login. Um, I have a like, kind of a dummy account. So I gave them my login information and, you know, just told them, you know, click on the Evergreen Park Public Library um, Facebook link, and then it'll take you to our page, and then you know how to get go Facebook Live from there, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, these are people that I trust, so I know that they're not going to go in there and change a bunch of information or kind of hack us. And again, I changed my password after the fact, so um, I have no issue with it. I, I'm, I'm really glad that you, yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that security side of it, though. Um, that is definitely a consideration, and, you know, even though um, that's sort of a nightmare situation. Uh, it, 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 I think it's an important one to consider. So that's, that's a great tip. Um, okay. Uh, we don't have any other questions that I'm seeing. Uh, a lot of great participation though. People are talking about, uh, uh, having major construction on their house, uh, having to shut everything down for 20 minutes. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> um, people are saying it's cold in my house. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really funny. Yeah, it's, uh, it, we're all in new work environments, so it's, it's a lot of adjusting to. Um, okay, so while I'm, I'm, I'm going to type in the first question, and I'll read it out loud. And uh, while I'm doing that, just remember that you can still ask questions of Jenna and Laura. Um, but uh, I want to get to um, hearing from you all. Um, as well. So, okay. Is your library doing any virtual programming? Um, If so, what are you using? Uh, Anyone just starting? Okay. If so, you can hear me type. Yeah, I think we'd like to get some ideas too. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, it's been fun. I mean, it's been fun to hear about this because again, we're all doing this, um, you know, we're all doing this, uh, you know, as a test, we're all, we're all, we're all doing this on the fly sort of. Um, so I'm really glad to hear you all just, you know, give an example because I think people, sometimes people can be scared to go first or start or start, you know, it's difficult to get started with these things, but once you get started, it's like a whole new routine, right? And that's what's important is just establishing these new routines. I see one question in here uh, concerning Zoom book discussions. Um, That's something that I've tried to do with um, my, I called it a stay home book share. And (laughs) I've, I haven't had anybody log in for it yet. So I'm curious to know what the uh, response was for yours. I think that was Anne that said that. Yeah, 
yeah we um yeah Ant says we are doing facebook live stories and zoom book discussions uh that uh, interesting tell us more about that and we'd love to hear more about um how you're doing those uh okay some uh okay question from christine um for for you and uh for laura and jenna if you pre-record videos how can you remove background noise that's distracting Ooh, do you have any tips for that <laughs> It has um, to do with editing. Yeah, editing your video. I guess it depends on what you use to edit your video with. Jenna, what do you use? I just use an app. I don't really have um, anything super, like, I don't know. I All I do is just record it on my phone. Um, and if I need a quiet area, I'll go to a quiet area. But I don't have anything to edit out background noises, though. Uh, I use Video Shop. And you can take the background noises out, I think, with it. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I've just been using um, Filmora Go on my iPhone and um, iMovie on my iPhone. And then mm -hmm. like the preloaded media video editing software on my uh, PC. <laughs> and I don't think any of those have like a background editor. Mm -hmm. One tip that I might offer is, and this is sort of awkward if you're doing like story times or something, but um, you know, good microphones have that effect of taking out background noise. Um, and can, and like, you know, I'm using a headset right now and the microphone is right by my face. Uh, and I always think that that is uh, preferable to, you know, just recording using your uh, like laptops uh, uh, microphone because the because that picks up like background stuff uh, a lot worse um, or in a lot more severe manner. Um, so that's just one thing. Uh, the editing side, it, it's sort of like, unfortunately it's kind of sometimes how much money you want to spend, right? And mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can spend a lot of money on like on video editing um, software and things like that, but there are also some free stuff that's easier to do and sometimes um, more fun, I think. Oh, I see Anne's comment that, uh, oh, registration was full. That's really good. I hope that you had a good turnout for that. I, I like the idea. I like the, I like that it's called the big book session. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have so many great uh, uh, responses to this first question. I'm going to read some of them. Um, sorry, all of you, I, I might not get to all of them, but uh, you all are doing fantastic here. Um, okay, so uh, Cindy says, we are using video for our weekly exercise program. Awesome. Video for craft programs as well. Um, Let's see here, Lisa says, online story times, teen and children book talks in a virtual escape room. I love that. Uh, Nicole says, I made a Google Drive folder and made it password protected. I shared it with our district. This, this way I'm not worried about copyright because it's only for our district. But the problem is I'm getting no engagement. Um, yeah, th thanks Nicole for, for suggesting that. Uh, Jennifer says, I'm telling folk tales and fairy tales via Facebook Live thrice a week. <laughs> gonna, gonna have to go shortly because the next one's at three. Oh, good luck, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see here. Um, Rennell says, I'm doing story times, book talks. I've never done this before and I'm using Facebook Live. Good luck. Uh, Megan says, we're using Facebook Meet for weekly book discussions, chats. We've only had a handful of people attend, maybe four in total over the course of three meetings. Uh, Kelly says, we're planning on using CrowdPer for virtual trivia. Ooh, that sounds fun. Kelly, please share the link with us so we can join. Uh, my brains are great at this type of thing. Uh, Jessica says, pre-recorded story times, uploaded YouTube, book groups didn't want Zoom meetings. Okay. So we're waiting to discuss books, set up Goodreads group in the meantime to share what we're reading, comfort watches, et cetera. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah, I've heard that, that Goodreads is, is, is great for that type of thing. Um, Matt says, oh, we are doing an online film discussion group in an online vocab club on Zoom. On Facebook, we have a virtual talent show in an art club. Ooh, thanks, oh, Matt. That's, that's fun. Yeah, that's really fun. Uh, Emma says we're doing Facebook Live for story times and Facebook and Instagram Live for book talks. I'm considering doing some kids book clubs story times on Zoom. Um, some people, okay, Megan says we pre-record baby talk story time videos on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, love it. So many great suggestions out here. I'm, I'm, I'm just like hard. I'm even having a hard time keeping up. Uh, <laughs> With, with some of those, so thank you. Yeah, folks, uh, one thing I wanna suggest is if you want everyone to see your comments, um, please make sure you're choosing the two in, uh, the, sorry, the all panelists and attendees um, in two, so you can actually, um, you see that uh, when, when you type a comment, there, uh, there's a field above it that says two, and if you choose all panelists, only, uh, uh, only Jenna and Laura and I are gonna be able to see it, uh, and uh, 
th there's no fun in that. So we want everyone to see this. So uh, while you all are still typing, I'm going to put in question two. As a team, how do you communicate about your programs? Um, how do you know who broadcasts when? Uh, how do you handle promotion? Yeah, great suggestion by Matt, uh, who says, can we get a link for the escape room? Yeah, if you have if you have links to some of this stuff, even if it's to your Facebook stuff, put it in there. We want to see it. Um, this is a great way for us to kind of take a look and explore on our, on our own. This is a big part of what we're doing here today. Uh, okay, so my question two is in there. Please feel free to continue to answer question one. Uh, but if you if you put in A1, I know you're answering question one. If you put in A2, I know you're answering question two. So I appreciate you doing that. Renee, thank you. Uh, we are doing story time lives with books and songs by artists who have given permission. Uh, she mentions Jim Gill and Dr. Jean. We delete after 24 hours. More of a lapsed at story time where only finger plays and songs are used. Exercise classes pre-recorded. Craft demonstrations for Easter. Total package challenges. Uh, we set up stories using various characters we have on hand. We ask questions like what we should call the characters, what comes next in the story, how they will get out of a predicament. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds awesome. Uh, brick board and busters, uh, Lego challenges, and fun Friday activities. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that, Renee. Um, okay, so question two again. Uh, as a team, how do you communicate programs? How do you know who broadcasts when, how do you handle, prom uh, that's to say promotion, not problem. Sorry about that. Um, Ricardo says by Zoom to communicate with each other, um, by promotion through our newsletter and social media. Um, thank you, Lisa, for putting in the escape room. Uh, Zoom meetings, yeah, a lot of people are saying Zoom meetings with uh, department heads um, and uh, just kind of getting a, a, a calendar together to offer to PR. That's kind of the same uh, route that I think Jenna and Laura were talking about. Um, yeah, thank you so much, people. Uh, this is great. I've, I've never seen such an active uh, discussion here of, of everyone. So thank you so much for this. Um, also, if you do have any other questions for Jenna and Laura, we still have them here. And, uh, um, and I would love to ask them for you. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm just Jennifer, having fun reading through all of the comments. <laughs> I know, they're great, right? So Jennifer says, I'm the only member of my team, so that's not a problem. I talk to myself constantly. I do share stories <laughs> to my personal page as soon as it posts to the library page and depend on other people to share. So yeah, that's kind of the same, um, the same route that, again, that Laura and Jenna were talking about is sometimes it's nice to have you know, that just the personal touch of people, you know, or you're, you know, using your own networks to kind of get people to participate. Um, Okay. Um, oh, great. Okay. So, so I also want to mention um, Janice had a question or Janice had a, uh, had, had a mention. If you, if your background noise is really bad, you can record the audio. And when you finish, just edit the audio only under the video. I have an editing system on my computer and it allows me to edit each source separately. Thank you, Janice. That's a good, that's a good recommendation. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, checking schedule post uh, feature. Yeah, I, I, there's some great mentions of, sh of spacing um, your videos out, which I think is really important. Um, having an upload schedule, um, shared Zoom calendar in Excel, we don't overlap, that's great. Yeah, okay, just trying to catch up here. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Anne says thank you for everyone who's sharing links to samples. Yeah, please, uh, please do. If you do have that stuff, please share. Um, and and actually, um, you know, uh, Jenna and Laura, if you if you all have uh, links you want to share too, um, please please feel free to do that. Um, I know people would love to check out your videos as as a great example. Yeah, if anybody wants to um, head to our Facebook page, we're just um, Evergreen Park Public Library on Facebook. Um, and you can take a look at a bunch of our stuff, so. Uh, okay, so um, I, I do want to go back to uh, answers. Right now, we are the only library department doing Facebook Live. We are also entering all virtual programs on the library's events calendar. Emma says we're starting to use a spreadsheet to schedule our virtual programs and then putting on our 
online calendar. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Just kind of getting a sense of what people are doing. Uh, we have about five minutes left, so I'm going to put in the third question. Um, so what equipment do you use to film your programs? Uh, how are you handling technical difficulties? Um, Jenna and uh, Laura, um, have you have you run into any like really serious technical difficulties? Didn't seem like that had been a huge problem for you all. The only technical difficulty that we ran or that I personally ran into was when we tried to have the artists for the second uh, Saturday Serenade login. They they were trying to it was two of them, so they were trying to social distance, and so they decided to do their performance outside. So they were just having some Wi-Fi issues. So it turned out that they couldn't go Facebook Live, so they just recorded everything and then uploaded it within the hour. Um, so I think that was really the only technical dis or technical issue um, on my end. No, I have crazy little technical issues all the time, but nothing, <laughs> nothing too bad. <laughs> it's just because I had to learn how to use use the technology. So yeah, um, yeah. That that I mean. It's funny, the, and, and the presenter, the outside presenter, we have a couple of people asking about that outside presenter thing too. Um, and that is, um, that just adds another level of, uh, of difficulty to it, I think. Um, and, and so if you are, and, and I think it really does matter if you are working with people that are um, tech savvy themselves, um, that, that helps obviously. Uh, but but I can see, I can see certainly, um, you know, we're all kind of, it sounds like a lot of you are using laptop webcams, phones, things like that. And I think those are really smart ways to do it. Um, yeah. So we, uh, we've we actually reached out to a lot of people within our community, um, you know, people that are chefs, people who are yoga instructors, um, musical artists. And um, this isn't Facebook Live related, but we've reached out to them to see, you know, kind of dig into their personal talents so that they can record something. So a lot of the work that I've been doing is accepting those videos from them and then doing a bunch of the editing to them. Um, so, you know, it's great to reach out into your community and um, pull from the talent within your community. Have some instructional videos. The yoga instructor is doing chair yoga um, so that we're featuring every Monday. For like a mindfulness Monday type of thing. So, um, you know, she's actually recording the videos and uploading them to our YouTube channel. And um, we're just sharing the link to that. So it's really great to source your community talent. Yeah, yeah. And that keeps you connected to those people during, yeah, during, during this, during shelter in place. And there have, <laughs> there have been some uh, technical difficulties with that too, where people don't know how to get the videos to us. So that does take a little bit of time and uh, <laughs> time and energy to get those, but it works out in the end. Do you use Dropbox or something like that? Uh, I've used Dropbox. Um, people that have iPhones have been sharing it with me through the cloud. Um, they've been emailing links to the video. And then um, there was one time that I was just like, here's, <laughs> here's the login information, just upload it. Um, but you know, there, there are different ways to do it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I, and I love the idea of, uh, you know, promoting local artists, especially um, because you all are sort of local experts and you know your community better than, um, than most. So that, that is a really good suggestion. Um, the, so much, so much good stuff happening uh, in the chat box. Thank you all. Um, some, some people saying that they are using their phones, uh, that they bought uh, microphones or um, or tripods. Uh, those are those are great suggestions. I appreciate that. People putting in links as well. Um, let's see here. Um, and and shared a video. Thank you so much for that, Anne. Um, they say some uh, Kelly saying uh, we'll be recording videos on an iPad and uploading to our YouTube channel. Yep, that's a great suggestion. Um, yeah, so you know you can go as high tech or low tech with this as as you want. I think um, it all kind of depends on what your needs are and what you're able to do. So um, we are actually coming up very much to the end of this. Uh, it's almost three o'clock, and there's been so much great participation. Um, there's one other question that I want to get to is someone asks, is anyone using TikTok? Um, Laura and Jenna, have you ever used it yourselves or do you, do you know any libraries that are using it? I don't use TikTok, Jenna. 
I have like an aversion to TikTok. I don't know. Um, I, you know, it's crossed my mind to start maybe exploring to use it, but as of now, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't really know. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of libraries use it as well. I, I do know that you know it could be something for school. I think that schools, school libraries might be considering using that because I think um, maybe this is. Uh, maybe this is a generalization on my part, but that a lot of young folks uh, are using TikTok. Um, but uh, but, but I, I haven't heard a lot about um, libraries using that yet. So um, good question. We'll see if, if things start to move in that direction. Sorry, um, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, sorry. Good, good question though. Um, okay, so we're, we're at three o'clock and I wanna um, be mindful of everyone's time here. So um, first of all, I'm gonna thank everyone for coming and participating. Huge thank you to Laura and Jenna for being willing to pre present today and, and, uh, and, and come talk with us about what they are doing. Um, thank, you, thank you all for, for coming and, and participating in the chat box. It was great. Uh, please sign up. We're having a bunch more of these. So please come back and, uh, and participate and be part of, um, part of the learning and the sharing that's happening uh, here at Rails. So uh, thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thank you. Thanks for putting this together, Dan. All right. Bye.